hey 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 thank you so much for tuning into my channel so today we're going to be doing grade 10 life sciences transport systems in plants yep plants <laughs> i know not a lot of people like plants but you'll see they're not that bad they're actually quite fun so the work that i'm going to be covering is going to be coming mostly from this textbook well it's a study guide the answer series yeah grade 10 yeah just so you can see so yeah so that's where most of it's going to be coming from and enjoy okay it's important to know that water absorption only happens in the roots not in the leaves not in the stems only in the roots and this is facilitated by root hairs so a plant will have a lot of little root hairs that absorb water okay yeah so just keep that in mind okay so now we're going to get into the diagram showing the absorption of water from the soil into the root hair okay so this diagram is labeled you can see that this gray represents the soil water this these yeah these represent the soil particles and as labeled there is the root hair so what you need to know is that the soil water has a higher water potential compared to the root hair because there are less solutes in the soil water compared to the cell sap of the root hairs. So this results in a water potential gradient being formed and osmosis taking place where water moves from the region of high water potential, which is in the soil water, to a region of low water potential, which is in the root hair. Okay, but what you need to know is that it's not just a simple little cute process. The water is first going to move through the permeable cell wall and then through the selectively permeable cell, cell membrane. And selectively permeable means that only certain substances can go through. It chooses like which um, substances can go through. And then afterwards, it moves to the cytoplasm. And then afterwards, it moves through the selectively permeable tonoplast and then into the vacuole. So I'm just going to repeat that again. It first moves through the permeable cell wall and then through the selectively permeable cell membrane, through the cytoplasm, and then through the selectively permeable tonoplast to be able to get to the vacuole. You guys did the structure of a cell earlier before this chapter so if you have kind of confused just revise that to be able to understand what the tonoplast is what the vacuole is what a cell membrane is you know okay yeah. so once the water gets into the vacuole the vacuole swells and then turbo pressure increases okay and just to add on um, the absorption of mineral salts into the root hairs is a different process because um, this is an active, it's an active process. This is because um, soil water has a lower concentration of dissolved nutrients than the cell sap. So basically, there's now a low um, potential of mineral salts in the soil water, whereas the root hair has a high concentration. So because now this process is active, energy is gonna be needed. So just remember that the process of water absorption is passive, so energy is not needed, whereas the process of um, mineral salt absorption, that one's active, so energy is needed for that process. And that's where um, the mitochondria comes in because it's the cell house, I mean, it's the energy house of the cell. So just remember that. Now we're going to do the movement of water from the root hair to the xylem of the root. There are two roots that the water can take. The first one is a cell by cell root, which here is indicated by the light gray arrows. These ones. You know, yeah, 
that's the first route and that's the cell by cell route by osmosis through the selectively permeable membrane of each cell so basically through this membrane through that membrane through that membrane yeah but the disadvantage of this method is that it is slower so that's why there's a second route which is indicated in black and that route is faster and that one happens through the cell walls and the intercellular air spaces by diffusion so it can even go through these little intercellular spaces yeah so that route is quicker than um the first route so yeah um when the first route which is the cell by cell route reaches the endodermis it cannot pass through the cell walls due to the presence of these casparian strips casparian i mean <laughs> these casparian strips so they prevent the water from like passing through there so then it passes through the passage cells of the endodermis here and then after going from the endodermis it goes to the pericycle there and then it reaches the root xylem which is there so okay the casparian strips these ones they are made of cork so yeah that's why the water can't move through them okay so now we're moving on to the upward movement of water in the xylem from the roots to the leaves so yeah there are three forces that are involved in the upward transport of water in the plant and those three forces are capillarity or capillarity action root pressure and transpiration pull so i'm just going to go through each of them individually so that you'll be able to understand the transport of the upward transport of water the first one is capillarity and this is basically when liquids spontaneously move up tubes that have a very small cross section and as you know the stem is quite narrow and therefore will have a very small cross section so water will move upwards in the stem particularly the xylem vessels and the tracheides of the stem vessels yeah it will spontaneously move upwards there due to capillarity action and capillarity action has like two forces that act on it and these forces are weak so that's why it's not only capillarity that acts on um the plant to ensure upward movement of water there's these two other forces but yeah capillarity action consists of adhesion and cohesion forces adhesion forces oh no i need to start okay cohesion forces is the force of attraction between the water molecules and cells and then adhesion is the force of attraction between the water molecules and the walls of the xylem vessels so these two forces work together to ensure that water moves up the, the xylem vessels in a continuous column okay the second force that is involved in upward transport of water in a plant is root pressure so root pressure develops due to the continuous influx of water from the soil here so remember because um as the water moves into the root the total pressure in the vacuole increases and due to osmosis you know that water moves from a high water a high concentration to a low concentration so due to the fact that in the roots there's now a high concentration of water the water will move from the roots where there's a high concentration to the stem where there's a low concentration via osmosis so just always remember that with root pressure osmosis is involved and root pressure is not strong enough to push the water high up in the stem 
so that's when the third force comes in which is transpiration okay so now this force this force is basically in the main character like transpiration pull is that force had it not been for transpiration pull then wow what i would take forever to move from the roots to the leaves because it's the main it's the main force uh when you think of transpiration pull sort of think of it like when you're drinking water or juice or cold drink or whatever with a straw you basically suck it up like with the straw so it's a it's a suction force so transpiration um transpiration pull is also like that okay so how it starts off is that the leaves transpire and as the leaves transpire the water potential in the intercellular intercellular air spaces i mean of the mesophyll cells which are there yeah these these intercellular air spaces the water potential in that decreases due to transpiration and basically water leaving the leaf going outside yeah i'm going to explain this in a very simplified term so that you understand it i'm going to try and not use a lot of scientific words just so that you can understand so yeah basically the water will leave the leaf through transpiration and as the water leaves the leaf <laughs> okay as the water leaves the leaf the water potential in the mesophyll cells decreases and so that causes the water potential gradient to form at the leaf xylem and the leaf xylem joins the upper ends of the stem xylem so because there's a lower concentration of water in the leaf compared to the stem there's now going to be a water potential and um the water is going to move from the stem xylem to the leaf xylem okay and remember i mentioned that it's a suction force so yeah tension builds up at the the root xylem so water is going to be pulled from the root um xylem in a suction force to the top of the stem xylem and also cohesion cohesion forces that i mentioned earlier are the ones that are going to make the water molecules to be drawn up as a cohe continuous column i mean almost a cohesion sorry and that is basically that 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 column that moving up is known as a transpiration stream Okay, so obviously now because water is being pulled up here, the water potential in the root is now going to decrease. And so this whole cycle is going to start all over again where water is absorbed by the root here. And, and so now because the water is moving up the stem the from, from the roots, the water potential in the roots is now going to decrease. And so this whole process is going to start all over again where water moves from the root hair to the root xylem. And then from the root xylem, it's going to move up the stem via transpiration pool with the help of cohesion forces. And it's going to get to the, the leaves. And when it gets to the leaves, transpiration is going to happen. And as transpiration happens, the water potential in the leaves decreases and basically the cycle starts all over again. What I explained was quite a, a simplified version. You need to know your terminology. Like you need to know things such as mesophyll cells. You need to know that water moves through the stomata of the leaves. You need to know that there's diffusion that happens from the cell walls of the mesophyll cells into the air spaces. So just when you study, just make sure you know those little technicalities. But if you understand the process, basically, that water moves from soil to the roots and then from the roots to the stem and from the stem to the leaves and just know your pressure, um, the, the forces that are involved capillarity which causes 
it to move up um, a continuous column, root pressure, which causes the water to move from the root to the stem, and then transpiration, which is the main force and basically cause that whole suction and it's faster. So just keep that in mind and it should help you um, when you answer your questions in your tests and exams. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this video provided you guys with more clarity, with more understanding. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to just comment like subscribe tell all your classmates tell your cousins your friends yeah thank you so much and we'll see you on the next video